We have joining us live Victor Oshoke now, who is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, good afternoon, Mr. Oshoke. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, listeners. Uh, thank you. I, I'm sure you watched that interview, or you must have seen, uh, we had an earlier conversation with Olu Martins. The first question for you would be, are you surprised at all the things are happening in Edo State? Uh, I wouldn't say I am surprised. First of all, I do not know why they are striving to make this about Ushumole. This is not about Ushimoli. This is about internal democracy in the party. I, I believe you must have watched the live uh, transmission of what happened yesterday. Uh, a committee was set up of eminent Nigerians, not politicians, eminent Nigerians, university professors, renowned lawyers, to vet the documents of those people wishing to contest the primary of the APC. Remember, after the, what happened to us in uh, Bayesa, it was clear to everybody that it was not going to be business as usual. Parties, uh, APC decided to do its own vetting instead of allowing the courts to do the screening for us. And that is why they arranged a team of eminent Nigerians to screen these candidates. For God's sake, somebody claimed he went to university. He went with an HSC, an A-level result. He could not produce the A-level result. I mean, that is what the committee told us. It was on live television. Are they saying that APC should have reached losing another state after winning it and then lose it in court? Remember, the issue of Obaseki's syndicate did not start today. PDP accused him in 2016. But perhaps there was no proper vetting then. The fact that he was able to skate through in 2016, and now after somebody had won election in Bayesa and it was taken from him because of discrepancies in his name, the party had to make sure that this time around they get it right. And so the panel sat, looked at their documents, and three of them did not skate through. It is not just Obaseki. The fact that Obaseki is the incumbent governor does not mean the rules have to be bent in his favor. There was possibility for him to go for appeal. He, he waived his right of appeal. Why did he waive it? Obviously because he knows that even if he's given 10 years, he will not be able to produce the A-level result. So let, let, let's be clear about what happened yesterday. It is strictly according to the constitution of the APC that members, people seeking office, must have to go through a screening process. And Obaseki, unfortunately, did not pass through the screening. Why is everybody talking about Obaseki? Why is nobody talking about Matthew Dwekere and uh, Chris Ogewonyi, who also did not pass through this vetting? Remember, in, in the, the, the deputy governorship candidate in Bayesa that lost the seat, he was a city senator. So these docu the, 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 the documents that, that led to his being disqualified were already used, he, he used them to get into the Senate. But he was disqualified by the court. So let us be very clear here. Everybody's talking about the show. This is not about the show money. This is about APC ensuring that what happened to them in Bayesa does not repeat itself again. Now, what do you think is the fate of the governor since he says it's not going to appeal? I cannot say. I'm not, I, don't, I, I don't know what for the governor. I'm not part of his strategic campaign. I'm, I'm, I don't know what his fate is. His fate, is, his fate is in his hands. He has a lot of options open to him, and he's free to, he's free to exploit those options according to his, the wishes of the supporters. Any sign that he may be joining PDP from the body language of PDP National Chairman Uche Secundas? Sorry, I cannot speculate on the party he wants to join because I do not know the, discuss, the party he's having discussions with. But he is free to pursue his political career elsewhere since he's, he has been disqualified from contesting under the APC. 
position uh, is that the decision the was justified. It's nothing against uh, Godwin or Baseki, even though you're asking why are others not talking about the other candidates that were, that were disqualified. But you do know that there's been ongoing conversation between Obaseki and Adam Soshomole. No, no, the, no, listen, what has been happening is what is happening again now. Obaseki is trying to create the impression that he has a problem with Oshomoli. It is not Oshomoli. Obaseki had problems with members of a do state APC. I mean, a, a, a state where 14 members who won uh, uh, House for Assembly elections, they are popular in their constituency. You refuse to, them to be sworn in. Select only nine. And those state is the only state in Nigeria with, that has 24 members, but only nine members are sitting in the House of Assembly today. The others have three members select, they've not been sworn in. So even if Obaski had gone through a primary, he would not win. That is the fact. So that he was disqualified at the screening level does not take away from the fact that Obaseki has since lost the goodwill of a do APC members. So even if he had gone to the primaries, he had no chance of winning. How do you conclude that uh, without getting to the primaries, even though, well, uh, he's been disqualified? But that will beg the question. Because I'm a member, I'm a stakeholder in a, a state APC. I go through, I, have, I walk through the cities of a state. APC members are not behind the Baseki. So how would he have won a direct That's why he was fighting against a direct problem. He wanted to select a few people, buy them over, and then they give him the ticket. He cannot win a direct primary because he is not popular among the people. That is the fact. And from a do state, I interact with my constituents. How do you expect people who elected people into the House for Assembly and a governor refused to swear them in? Those people will get up and vote for that governor coming. It is a year now. The people draw John White must be the minimum members that you sit in the house will be 24 and the maximum 40. And those states is the only state in Nigeria today where nine members are sitting. So how do you expect such a governor to win the election when he has to go through a direct primaries? These people, these members for these 14 members for assembly are influential in their constituencies. So how was he expecting to win? There was no way it was good. He has, he has unilaterally removed four local government chairmen from office, elected chairmen, for no reason, just because they do not support his second-term ambition. All right, Victor Oshoke, we'll say thank you very much for bringing uh, that perspective to the conversation. And do stay safe out there. Thank you very much.